what I'm going to go through today is one of the most important factors in scaling your coaching business, which is getting good client retention. When you are first starting out in your fitness business, my hunch is going to be that you're not getting as many leads as you want. You'll get some leads, you'll make some good sales, you'll be able to grow your business, but you will always be looking to take on more clients and make more sales. One of the easiest ways to combat this is have good client retention. So if you've got a three month client retention, you are going to need to rebuild your whole client base every three months. If you have six month client retention, you are gonna to have to rebuild your whole client base every six months, which gives you way more time and takes obviously you know half of the pressure off the front end sales. So having good client retention and getting that six month retention is one of the key metrics that we look for with businesses that are ready to scale to six figures plus. And I'm gonna walk you through three ways that you can improve this that are nothing to do with your actual coaching. It's nothing to do with the clients once they've signed up. It's everything to do with what you do before. So the first thing that I want you to think about is the message that you're putting out on your marketing, okay? One of the big, big problems when people come into a service is that it's been marketed as something different to what it is. We get this all the time. We have people come to us from other business programs that have said, they told me it was one-to-one -one and it wasn't, or they told me it was this and it wasn't. And then we have to do a load of hard work in making them feel safe again because someone else has let them down. The same thing with fitness. If you sit on social media and you do the bland basic stuff of, I'm gonna help you lose weight without giving up the foods that you love that's going to cause problems for people come in your program because I reckon that you've probably got slightly more intricate ways of dieting and training than that. You have to make systems within your marketing. If you have a specific way of training and you have a specific way of nutrition or the clients that you work with, you find these systems work better for, you have to market around that. If you do calorie cycling, market around calorie cycling because then when people come into your program, they're already aware of what they're going to have to do and they're already made peace with it and they've already decided that that looks like something that will work for them. If you have a really broad, bland service, you are always going to have clients that come in and particularly don't really flick with the way that you do things. And I know that you'll pretend that you will coach every client the way that they want, but you're always gonna have your tendencies and you're always gonna have the ways that you've learned to do things and the ways that you are better at coaching. So you have to be upfront about the way you are, the way that you act, the way that you talk. So there's no point in me coming onto this and being all prim and proper and talking like I've you know, been in business for 75 years and I'm an old head in the games, because I'm not. If you come in my program, I'm gonna swear, I'm gonna tell you to sort your shit out, I'm gonna tell you you're being a fucking idiot and you should do things this way because this is the way that they work better, okay? And if you're not ready for that, there's gonna be friction. And when there's friction, it's gonna mean that you're not gonna stay very long and you will leave. So the first thing that I would tell you is make sure that you're clear about your program and make sure that you're clear about your personality on the initial call because it will save you a fucking ton of problems. The second thing I would do was have a really good qualification process when someone comes onto a call. Now, I agree, the sales calls. I know people say, no, it's a consultation call, it's, it's a sales call. You are selling your program. However, you should only be selling your program to people that you know are a good fit for your program and that will help. And I know that coaches in the early stages of the career have this thing where they tend to just take on people that will pay them. I know that that may seem counterintuitive to running a business, but the people that you bring on that aren't good fits for your service, that you know seem flaky, that don't seem right, are going to cause problems. They're gonna take your attention away from the clients that you do need to be given attention to, and they're gonna have very, very low time in the business. Therefore, it makes it all a really inefficient way of dealing and growing. Things that I would look for here. Don't take on clients that don't have reasonable goals. For example, if someone says to me, oh, I just want to lose a few pounds, I'm looking at that thinking, that's not really good enough for you to make the sacrifices that you're going to need to make to, to do our program, okay? If somebody says to me, for example, I only want to make two grand a month, I'm thinking there's no way you're going to put the effort in that I need you to put in for our program to work for you if you only really want to get to two grand a month because you'll get to two grand a month in like five days and then what you're going to do for the rest of the program. You're not going to be motivated because you're going to have reached a goal and you're going to want to leave. So you need to make sure that the clients have goals that are aligned with where your program sets expectations. 
And if you do that, then you're going to make sure that you get people in the program that are bought into the journey and are bought into the length and intensity of the journey that your program is. So that would be advice number two, is make sure that clients are bought in enough to the goal and bought in enough to the process before you get them into the program or else you're going to cause yourself problems from there. And the third thing that you need to do in order to get good client retention, and this is going to seem counterintuitive again, but charge more. I know I bang this like a drum, but it's because it needs to be banged like a drum because nobody fucking listens. If you have a very low cost service, people will pay it just to have a go. They'll pay it because mm, it's not a lot of money. I'll just see if, you know, see how it is. I'll, I'll, I'll have a punt at it. And what you're going to actually attract is lots of low quality clients. You're going to attract clients with low buy-in. You're going to attract clients with low motivation. And you're going to attract clients that actually probably could afford something more, but they decided it's not really a priority to pay that amount of money and they'd rather just pay something less. If that's the case, your retention is going to be quite poor. The clients are not going to stay for six months. They're not going to buy into the service and they're not going to be brilliant members of the team. Now, yes, will you open the doors to occasionally the odd person that's in financial difficulties that does really want it and can access it? Yeah, you will. You'll get one or two. But that'll be drowned out by the 20 to 30 other people that don't really care, that aren't really bought into the service, that don't aren't really bought into the journey or the goal, and that are only going to not, you know, cause you issues. You, you're going to have to chase them for check-ins. You're going to have to chase them to anything. And then when they decide to leave, they're also going to say that it was your fault. They're going to say, oh, I wasn't really motivating enough. I didn't really get enough attention, even though you chased them. I didn't feel like I got really much value from the check-ins because you didn't do them. Um, and it's going to cause you just basically to feel crappy about your business, as well as having really high churn. So those are the three things that I would change within your business in order to make sure you get better leads, therefore you get better clients, and therefore you get better client retention, okay? So if you want to know more about how to do that within your business, you want to learn all about the metrics that you need to be able to hit, like the six months client retention, okay? We've got them all for lead gen, for sales, for coaching results, for testimonials, for referrals. You want to know all of that stuff. Make sure that you notify yourself when there's new videos by hitting the bell icon and subscribe to the channel using the button. See you next time.